Hey guys, welcome to the Season 12 Chobo League Finals. We got exit starting at the 12 o'clock location as the Orange Terran bottom left, or bottom left corner, 6 o'clock location we have grassed starting as the Yellow Protoss, and this is on blindside. And I'm going to say I do not know who to favor in this match. This is kind of an interesting map to start off with. Apparently there's no lag for these players as well, which is fantastic. So excited about this. So Blindside is named thus because, well, you got this mineral only up here. You got your natural expansion over what's a pseudo ramp, not exactly a ramp. I think there's just a little bit of a sliver where you can get the high ground action, where you where you get the, the misfire advantage right there. It's hard to just position units on that. But otherwise, all across the map, you can see how wide it open it is. You've got all sorts of lanes absolutely everywhere, so you can end up getting hit. You can just see the ramps leading into various locations. So point being, Blindside is aptly named because there's multiple locations where you can get blindsided. And as far as, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as opportunities to sneak proxies and do things like that, a lot of opportunities for that on this match. I do not know whether we're going to see that from either of these guys, though. Exit has kind of had a freewheeling... I don't know, it almost, he almost plays responsively, for lack of a better term. It looks like he's starting to set up for a front door seal. Barracks building grass, moving out his probe scout. I think he's a little bit more in practice between the two going into the... Well, I don't know how much they played otherwise. But as far as just Chobo League play, I think Exit had the harder route just because he had a lot of people actually show up to his matches. Grast had a lot of withdrawals on the way here, if I recall. Probe Scout actually not even... So this is this is the nature of Blindside. Also, you have all these doodads on the map where things can hide. Another interesting feature of this map. Probe and SCV not even seeing each other. So actually an opportunity to be a little bit cheeky on both sides. Assimilator is up. Looks like there was a Zealot skip for Grast. He has snuck an Assimilator, but is that front door sealed yet? Not sealed. And it looks like Grast is going to have an opportunity to go ahead and harass that SCV right off the bat. SCV pulling off the line. Trying to get that seal, but Grass doing a good job of blockading it. Exit has to know, though, he's not under any form of pressure. Because the no zealot out just yet. Exit, realizing it, is going to go ahead and pull that SCV out. And, he, and noticing the lack of pressure, noticing the lack of zealot, he's going to go. And this is what I was saying with Exit. And I'm actually talking with him for a previous match where I'm like, was that a build order? And he's like, nope, just playing straight up responsive. I think he's just, the way he likes to play is see what his opponent's doing, and then just play the match from there. Try to, in fact, I think Artosis was trying to do this on stream a bit, which is to basically try to match the amount of units and the type of units comparative to what his opponent was doing, particularly in this matchup. Dragoon being produced, exits, had a lot of success with that thus far. Bunker going down and floating out that barracks to go ahead and create that front door seal. So an early second base well ahead of Grast. Grast is going to have to do something to catch up in this match as a result. SCV also pocketed on the corner to go ahead and see the follow-up. So, very nice build here for... And actually, gapping short. I was expecting him to go ahead and pull it up. And that does leave a little bit of a... Get out of the way, Kakaru. That does leave a little bit of a area where you can go through with the Zelts. But he's actually pulling this back, perhaps, to put a Supply Depot or get maybe even a, a closer seal. In the meantime, Grast has snuck a pylon at the 3 o'clock location and dropped an additional gateway there. The Dragoon already has one kill, but this ha upon seeing a lack of an additional pylon, I believe that SCV saw a lack of additional pylon and a lack of additional tech, he has to expect something along these lines. That's going to be three gateways to open. So there's going to be a lot of Dragoons on the front door. However, there are two factories being built for grass. My concern here, though, is, is usually with the two factory opener that is more of a vulture style build, and vultures against this amount of dragoons are suboptimal. However, exit going with the additional scout, finding the additional two gateways at the three o'clock location. So now he knows he needs to push. That was like wow, that was a big swing just in getting that scouting information. He knows he needs to get a factory. Sooner, or sorry, a machine shop sooner rather than later. Dropping that machine shop immediately needs to get siege tech and is also going to have to, well, see if he builds additional marines. Marine, get in the bunker. Okay, get get there. Your life is at risk. 
Probe actually pissed at this SCV, gonna pin him in the corner and make sure he, his life was for that. You die for your scouting information, treacherous. Second bunker being built from exit. Does need to pull SCVs off the line now to go ahead and repair, and it is going to basically be a fight to see whether that sie enough siege tanks get out in time. And keep in mind, even if that siege tank is out, it can be difficult to defend this because that those Dragoons can oftentimes just sneak past and do additional damage and just pick off that siege tank and keep that siege tank low. More SCVs pulling off the line to try to keep this bunker up. One of these SCVs could get picked off, but Exit does have, at least thus far, one more SCV than he needs to make sure that bunker stays alive. He knows he's going to be in a strong position if he can just hold here. Machine Chop whirling. Siege check is on the way. Six Dragoons on the front. And continuing to pound away at this bunker. Siege check is there. Siege check is not yet online. And it needs to be very, very careful with this positioning. Trying to get a shot on the corner where he can. Now there are more Dragoons. Yeah, pushing forward to pick up that siege tank. The siege tank very carefully sneaking out of range. And one Dragoon goes down as a result. Another siege tank on the way. So there's going to be two siege tanks on the front. And the opportunity, the window for Grast to break through this is closing. So Exit pulling back with the SCVs. He did end up losing a little bit of an, uh, some unnecessary minerals here with 100 for that bunker. But otherwise, this is going to be a big investment for Grass that is not going to pay off. This Nexus is coming out extremely late comparatively. So Exit in a very strong position now. Moving into the mid game. Getting an Academy who wants to try to get CompSat out as rapidly as possible to see what Grass is up to. And Grass behind this going to go ahead and try to go for a double expansion. Wants to double expand to try to do some form of economic catch-up. Very risky play here, but it may pay off because Exit currently is in more of a defensive position. He's just sitting on the two factories and continuing to play the economic game. Also researching mines. Engineering Bay basically is just lumped down tech and really hasn't put him in, he's not in a position to really go out and stop this. Also with this robotics facility, there is a potential. Oh, a Stargate. Are you kidding me? Grast is immediately going into three base Arbiter as a fast follow-up. Has that observer observatory going down. So let's see if he can get observers on the front with the Zealots to pin exit in his base. And he's going to go for a quick turnaround fast economy into three base Arbiter. What that is going to do, though, is that's going to slow down a lot of his economic output in this mid-game. Which means he's going to be a little bit light on units. But Exit is not in a position to punish him, it looks like. He's getting a starport, so he's actually thinking about Vulture Drops, potentially, to deal with this. Does have Vulture Speed. I'm wondering if he's going to try to sneak out with this. The Engineering Bay. Look, So he was expecting some sort of elevator, which is honestly what I was primarily expecting. This is some sort of troop elevator of with the robotics facility get zealots in the base get dragoons in over the defensive lines weapons one is researching did get a comsat wrong vision there but he does not have eyes on that third base so he may have an idea of tech i'm not sure that he caught wish i could have seen that never mind i thought it was going to be two base arbiter a corsair being built are you kidding me what is going on? Grasp building a Corsair. Was that a misclick? Maybe to scout? But getting a fleet beacon up otherwise. <clears throat> and he's going to go for three base. D-Web. So he's going to go D-Web and two base Stargate otherwise. <clears throat> now this is a very rare build. Rare enough that I don't think in all of my time casting Brood War I have seen this yet. Defensive web is very effective against siege tanks if they're sieged. And that might provide Grass the time he needs to get a sufficient carrier force out. Plopping down some additional gateways as well. In the meantime, Exit plopping down some additional factories. He does have that dropship building. The Vulture's trying to sneak through. <clears throat> Siege Tank's also pushing a little bit forward, and this is where Grast has to be feeling a little bit nervous. So Barrack's spotting, and this is... I'm not sure if Exit's going to recognize that this is fewer Dragoons than he might have seen typically. 
Missile turret out there. The observer getting pushed back. It could rejoin the front, maybe do a little bit of mine clearing. But this is a third command center up for exit. He's trying to play the long-term economic game, and that might be playing right into Grassed Sands. He's continuing standard Vulture tank production, is plopping down two additional factories. But he is going to need once more Corsairs. I thought he was going to switch. No, it's just going to be... I take it back. He's just going to go for gateway pressure, D-Web for the tanks, and try to get it done with Zealots and Dragoons otherwise. Interesting. And we will see if it plays out. Third base is now up. I am very curious to see this. I mean, that's very micro-intensive. I am curious to see if it ends up playing out. That's seven, eight gateway, or how many is this? So four, eight, nine, nine gateways. Three bases have been completely untouched. Two forges, I think think there's one forge just one forge going for a weapons one at the nine o'clock location the drop moving in with the vultures is now going to discover this base a cannon is already in place and there are dragoons nearby to go ahead and engage this i don't even yeah only one vulture even gets out it got one shot off before being taken out now here's the thing exit with the timing on that base i don't think he knows how long that base has been up he knows it's well saturated he knows it's well defended but he is starting to move out. He has that level 1 weapons. Level 2 on the way. He's getting Charm Booster. He has the Goliaths. But Goliaths don't do much against D-Web. And the other advantage of this is, is with sufficient forces, particularly with a Zealot Heavy turnaround, D-Web lets units get on top of Terran units. And it lets the Dragoons kind of hit from a distance. Waiting to see Grass go ahead and engage with this attack force. But keep in mind... You got to drop D webs. You got to position your Goliaths just right, or sorry, your, your dragoons just right. The Protoss version of Goliath, I guess. We do see carrier capacity being upgraded, so and two additional Stargates being plopped down. So there is going to be a potential turnaround into carrier. The gateways at the three o'clock base probably going to be sacked here by Exit. Exit is setting up to go ahead and take. An additional base at the 9 o'clock location. I really want to see an engagement here. And I'm wondering if this first engagement is going to more or less determine the match. A lot of Dragoons, not a lot of Zealots. The Zealots are also not speed upgraded. Vulture sneaking through, trying to find if there's a fourth up. Finding nothing there, they're going to go ahead and reposition. Exit backing up into a defensive stance. And talk about blindside. Blindside indeed. The Corsairs moving out. The Dragoons looking for targets. I think the Corsairs, they got to be spotted. Well, no, not quite. I'm looking for the moment where this gets spotted by Grast. Another SCV moving up to go ahead and take an additional base in the upper left-hand corner. This is such a tease right now. 9 o'clock location. Nexus is up. Exit starting position to that direction. He wants to go ahead and try to cut this map. And go for like a long slow push. Go ahead and hit 200-200 and play a long-term economic game where he gets lots of upgrades. I believe he does realize those D-Webs and Corsairs are out in the air because he's got EMP on the way. And one big EMP on these Corsairs will completely neutralize that D-Web threat. I do not see a science vessel in the air just yet. Goliath going ahead and picking, doing a little bit of damage here against those Corsairs. And that is provoking Grass to start to move forward. Here we go. One D-Web on that initial cannon line. There's still cannons free firing. Second D-Web. Still, there's plenty of cannons in that back area. And it looks like the D-Web just did not have enough coverage. And because of all of the supply that is caught up in those Corsairs, the Dragoons are in fact pushed back. Exit with a 30 supply lead now after that engagement. I am very concerned now for Grast. And this is, that's the problem with this build, in my opinion, is, is it just is so micro-intensive where you just have to drop D-Webs, have that army perfectly positioned. It's just very difficult to control overall, particularly in large groupings. Zealots starting to join them. It looks like they are speed upgraded. Level 1 weapons will be online shortly. Not that it's going to make a difference for these Corsairs. 
exit catching grass a bit out of position is forcing engagements. I think he realizes that he has a superior supply. Also has level 2 weapons, level 1 armor, and this is kind of the typical, not exactly typical timing. Zealots are going to be able to sneak up into this upper left-hand base. Might be able to wreak some havoc there. Also, Grass trying to take another base in that bottom right-hand corner. Engaging here. Catching a lot of these units on siege, but this is a, honestly... Pound for pound, this is a really small attack force. But with that attack force bunched up, the D-Webs are wreaking havoc. So with fewer Dragoons and the range, it looks like they are going to be able to get a lot accomplished. The Zealots able to get on top of those siege tanks as well. And Exit backing up. So I actually am going to say, is Grass a genius? And it looks like the Zealots were also able to force a cancellation in that upper left-hand corner while that attack was happening. And clear out a lot otherwise. Exit forces a little bit like Tau Cross, forces a lot of bunching of troops across kind of these, what do we want to call them, map doodads. Storm might have been a better choice here, but D-Web is certainly effective. Speaking of Tau Cross, I feel like Tau Cross and Storm, it's like the classic combination, the romance that's meant to happen. Are the D-Webs going to come out? It doesn't look like Grast... Wants to engage here. He's pulling back. The Speed Zelts are still running around looking to do some damage. Observer picked off. Dragoon's moving up. Or sorry, Vulture's moving up. I can't talk units today all of a sudden. Good speak. Uh, D-Web planted, but not in the most optimal position. It looks like a battle probe there. Some Zealots and some reinforcements trying to come from that left-hand left side. But the tanks are just remaining unseaged and pushing through this because of the reduced numbers overall. And they are just melting everything in front of them. Now, Grast is in trouble of getting his front door contained. Between the siege tanks and everything else, Zealots marching forward, trying to clear something up. One tank remaining sieged. Again, the rest of the tanks remaining unseaged. Which I think is a good play for Exit because of the differential in Corsair. With the supply, he can just walk right through the D-Web and actually start using it to his advantage. Sorry, I missed what happened to those hero zealots in the meantime, but Grass going to call GG right there. Interesting play, but did not play out for Grass. Well played from exit top to bottom. Game one goes to him in this best of seven. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll move on to game two.